Hello chess friends and welcome to Zalov's chess channel and welcome to our best chess games of all time series. So in this series we're following the best chess games that have been ever played in chess history and today I wanted to show you really a cool game played by Rashid Gibiatovich Nezhmedinov against Mikhail Tal from the USSR uh, chess championship in 1961. So Rashid Gibiatovich Nezhmedinov uh, was Mikhail Tal's second. Uh, he helped him out uh, to get his uh, world championship title. He helped him out in some opening preparations. But I think the most important thing about Nezhmedinov was that uh, he prepared uh, Mikhail Tal uh, very well in this tactical in this tactical battles. That's why uh, Mikhail Tal was really the magician. He played this really really attractive and aggressive games. But you see how aggressive this guy Rashid Nezhmedinov was. Uh, that's why uh, we have now a battle between two top tacticians from chess history and that's why I decided to show you this game uh, the tournament didn't go well for both of them uh, Boris Paski won the USSR chess championship back in 1961 Mikhail Tal finished only uh, on the fifth place but back in the 60s the, US the USSR chess championship was really sort of a world championship because uh, most of the players from the top 20 for instance came from um, the USSR so that's why uh, Basically, it was sort of a Russian sport. It was sort of, sort of a Soviet sport, chess, back in the back in the 60s. And you see how aggressive these two fellows were. For instance, this guy Nezhmedinov played really some great and attractive tactical battles, but he played against the great tactician, other great tactician, the magician from Briga. Be prepared, we have again a great, great tactical battle. So let's see the game. Uh, E4 played by. Um, Nezhmedinov, uh, c5 by Mikhail Tal, knight to f3, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, and now knight to f6, knight to c3. The Sicilian was often played uh, by Mikhail Tal. He was also very, very well prepared in this particular opening lines like the knight of or the shevening system of the Sicilian. In the game, we have e6, which is the shevening system, and uh, I've mentioned this many times if you have troubles maybe to find a good opening preparation you can check out really this shevening system although uh, i've shown also some great games in which black got crushed in this particular opening but i th still think that this is a solid opening because uh, these two pawns are the most important uh, structural elements uh, in your game because they are covering these four important centralized squares so it's sort of a restric restriction uh, setup in which you're not allowing your opponent to attack your uh, other side of the board. So it's it's a good thing, I think, to uh, to play this uh, opening in the game. Bishop to e2, played by Nezhmedinov, and we have now a6. Also a restriction move. Uh, this move has a double function. It restricts, of course, this uh, very important uh, b5 square, but it also prepares uh, black to push the pawn on b5 and expand on the queen side. So castling, we have uh, queen to c7 by Tal, and now f4. You see Nezhmedinov goes very aggressively into the game, but he didn't, uh, he dared really uh, to challenge Mikhail Tal in an open tactical battle. Not many players dared to play this uh, aggressive style against Mikhail Tal. They tried these positional setups, and although uh, Mikhail Tal lost also some games, but in tactical battles, it was really, really hard to beat the ma magician from Riga. So we have knight for BTD7 by Tal, g4. Nezhmetinov goes straight forward uh, with his pawns uh, attacking on the king side. We have b5, and uh, here maybe um, bishop to f3. Uh, I recommend you to play, although Nezhmedinov played here the move uh, a3. Uh, he didn't allow Mikhail Tal to attack his knight. But I still think we can try bishop to f3. And for instance, if black tries the move b4, then we have this knight uh, square for the knight. We can uh, here play knight to e2. The e4 would be then protected. And then maybe uh, change the direction of this knight. Maybe jump with the knight on g3. And uh, black has already make made his, made uh, his expanse on the queen side so i don't think that uh, black can attack further on the queen side so black would probably try something else instead of this b4 move so but okay a3 was played a preventing move a prophylactic move here by Nezhmedinov, bishop to b7 and now bishop to f3 uh, we have knight to c5 attacking this uh, pawn on e4 that's the main target uh, of Mikhail tal's queen to e2 protecting this pawn and now e5 
which is a good move by Mikhail Tal, cracking the position immediately in the center. Very aggressive, uh, aggressive move by uh, by Mikhail Tal because uh, we have sort of a pawn chain here, and the best way to crack pawn chains is to crack it in the center. So it means around this f4 square. So that's why e5 perfectly fine. And now we have knight to f5. So we have lost a little bit uh, the protection after this move e6 e5. We have lost the protection of this f5 square, but still this knight can get kicked out with uh, with some potential g6 move. So g6 was played by Mikhail Tal anyway and now we have f takes e5 uh, d takes e5 was played by Mikhail Tal now the game becomes really really tactical here uh, there is this line I've analyzed also this line if you for instance take I don't think that it brings you so much because we have e takes f6 and with the king in the center you have some discovered attack possibilities black would probably uh, proceed here with put some knight to e4 ideas but we have uh, a very well protection very good protection here with this e4 bishop takes uh, e4 here would be the possibility in queenside castle uh, would be probably the continuation of blacks but i still think uh, that white has a better position because we have now a weakened pawn structure in front of uh, black's king uh, the bishops are very active we could go something like bishop to f4 and uh, when we evaluate pawn structures we always evaluate them by um, this pawn island so you see black has four pawn islands on the other hand uh, white has only two pawn islands so it means this connected pawns here we have one and two pawn islands so from an end games perspective i think this would be a favorable continuation here for white so that's why after the move f takes e5 d takes e5 was played and now uh Nespedinov played knight to h6 a very important move to cement our knight you don't want to of course to take out uh, the knight uh, the knight on h6 because after bishop takes h6 um black would have troubles on dark squares because we have already advanced this g6 pawn so an immediate threat would be bishop to g7 uh, there's no way that black would castle anymore on the king side black would be then forced to castle on the queen side so it wouldn't be a good continuation so that's why here knight to e6 played by tal with the preparation to cement the knight uh, here on the square f4 bishop to g2 opening here this uh, f file and now bishop to g7 was played by mikhail tal there is a better line i think uh, here for mikhail tal but i wanted to show you also how dangerous it can be this particular line that uh, neshmedinov has prepared for instance there is this mistake it seems that it's a good move knight to d4 is black's possibility but then you get queen to f2 attacking here this uh, f6 knight and i'm not seeing a good way how you should proceed here because if you protect the knight then we have some uh, possibilities to push the pawn on g5 and here your f7 square is hanging so that's why here i think tal should have proceeded with the move knight to f4 uh, this is i think the only move that tal can play here in order to get some kind of an activity because black um, has cemented the knight white would be forced probably to take out uh, here the knight on f4 after he takes f4 now e5 would be the possibility but now i think knight to d5 can be played knight takes d5 bishop takes d5 bishop takes d5 and now queen to c5 i think solves all the all of the positional problems in black's position because we have now um, closed f file the king has to react after something like queen to f2 we can simply take out uh, take out here this uh, uh, bishop on d5 after rook to d1 queen to c5 uh, simplification move and i think this will be probably a draw but in the game uh, tal didn't play this move knight to d4 or he didn't play this move knight to f4 he played the move bishop to g7 and this is now really a critical moment uh, in the game here nezhmedinov showed all of his attacking repertoire you see uh how uh very as i said very well tactical they were prepared here you can pause the video and try to find the nezhmedinov move the mikhail tal move i think mikhail tal would probably also play this move uh, of course it's the move rook takes f6 sacrificing the rook so no way that black is ever uh, ever going to castle anymore in this particular game because now after bishop takes f6 we have a monster move knight to d5 and it seems now that a good thing uh, would be to take out the knight i've analyzed this uh, particular line if you take bishop takes d5 then we have e takes d5 
uh, the knight is hanging let's see possible continuations if you play for instance to move knight to d4 again so if you play again knight to d4 we have queen to uh, f2 again attacking the bishop and here if you for instance try to play queen to a7 with some discovered attack possibilities there is this move uh, here king to h1 solves everything again the bishop is hanging that's the main problem if you for instance try bishop to g7 then here d6 uh, is a very very good move if you for instance don't want to lose uh, your rook here rook to d8 then we have the possibility to push the pawn on c3 and uh, here the queen is pinned you cannot play knight to c6 because uh, the bishop is aiming on that square so i think it will be probably game over here for for black so let's see another continuation uh, so instead of this knight to knight to d4 uh, if you try for instance to play queen to b6 uh, if you attack uh, the king then we have again king to h1 again um, uh, black has to react if we go for instance knight to d8 then again bishop to e3 attacking the queen the queen doesn't have good squares probably d6 is the best move in order to create some kind of a blocking system not allowing uh white to open the life square diagonal but now uh, g5 uh, attacking the bishop bishop to g7 would be and now bishop to d2 is a good move with the preparation to play bishop to b4 let's see a possible continuation rook to c8 and now bishop to b4 i think again black doesn't have anything black is probably lost here in the game you could try maybe knight uh, queen to d7 but now knight to g4 with the preparation to play knight to f6 cementing the knight again we have the possibilities to attack the e5 pawn you cannot castle that's the main problem you cannot uh, attack uh, here the bishop uh, on f8 because here this f6 weakness uh really really is um, a huge one we could play some fork ideas here on f6 so that's why again this would be i think a losing game so instead of this knight to d4 or this queen to b6 you could try maybe knight to d8 but again i think we can play this very very important move um, here queen to f2 or d6 immediately uh, opening the light square diagonal and simply take out the rook so tricky tricky stuff so this was my analysis after the move knight to d5 uh, you see you cannot take uh, this knight on d5 it would be game over nesh medinov saw all of that that's why he played this very nice tactical shot with the uh, rook takes f6 the bishop is a little bit loose here on uh, on f6 uh, although it's a strange position although black has this uh, dark square bishops but still black has some dark square problems that's the main problem and here uh tal tried queen to d8 protecting the bishop but now a uh, queen to f2 a very important move uh, which again attacks the bishop and opens uh, here uh, the f file this f7 square is of course the main target of Nezhmedinov's here knight to f4 we have and bishop takes f4 e takes f4 and now e5 cracking the position this knight it's not allowing Mikhail Tal to castle. That's the main positional problem in Black's position. Uh, Black cannot castle. Black would love to escape with this king, but this king is really stuck in the center. After e5, we have bishop takes e5, and that was now the main mistake of Mikhail Tal. Maybe I think only one move can solve solve this position. Uh, only one move can help out maybe Mikhail Tal to get out of this uh, positional mess. Here, bishop to h4, I think, is uh, the main main mo uh, the main defensive idea that Tal can play after something like queen to d4. That would be probably the continuation. The idea behind this move it is to play this move e6, discoverly attacking the rook. So that's why rook to f8 would be. Um, would be sort of a forced move by by black but now after rook to d1 and uh, rook to c8 i still think that black can hang on to this position black can defend here uh, although the position is a little bit too crowded around the uh, black king but still uh, this is playable because at least we have some kind of defenders in front of your king there is also of course this threat to play knight to f6 in a couple of moves but uh, still we have the star square bishop which protects everything and uh, although black will never castle anymore in this position but uh, here Mikhail Tal I think missed uh, this move bishop to h4 instead of this bishop to h4 he played bishop takes e5 and it allows now 
Nash Medinov to open the e file. Rook takes Rook to e1, attacking the bishop. F6 was played, but now knight takes f6 and uh, you cannot take uh, with the bishop of course you have to take out the, with the queen queen takes f6 but now queen to d4 and uh, you see how great uh, how great uh, this attack was by Nezhmetinov all of the pieces are really in perfect harmony although black is a rook up but they're these rooks are really far away they're not participating in the attack they're not participating in the defense uh, here king to f8 had to be played and now rook to e5 uh, played by Nezhmedinov. if you try for instance bishop to g2 this would be a suicide because we have now a very very tricky line rook to e8 discovery attacking the queen king uh, if you take the rook of course you lose the queen so that's why you would be probably forced to play the move a uh, king to g7 but now rook to e7 uh, is game over here for black after uh, king takes h6 we have queen takes f6 and now you cannot prevent um, uh, white from checkmating you in the next move uh, we can play queen to h4 you cannot uh, do anything about it so it's game over in the game uh, as said after the move king to f8 and rook to e5 queen to d8 was played trying to simplify the position but as i said again this was simply game over we have rook to f5 by nash medino you have to react here uh, e takes f5 was played and now rook, uh, queen takes rook on uh, h8 we have king to e7 Qu uh, queen to g7 tal played here uh, king to uh, king to e6 but now a very important move g takes f uh, f5 king to d6 and now knight to f7 and it was game over Nezhmedinov really crushed here Mikhail Tal you see how uh, great this attack was with uh, this great attacking harmony between the pieces and here I think Mikhail Tal got destroyed by his own own weapon with some great great tactics here you see how great this guy Nezhmedinov was uh, he never became grandmaster but that's a uh, subject for another for another video I think my brother-in-law uh, Antonio the famous Agadmator has explained his life very well uh, through his videos so you should really check out his Nezhmedinov's video uh, there was this I think political problem about uh, Nezhmedinov's career uh, not all of these players uh, could participate uh, f from the uh, former USSR couldn't participate in all of the tournaments there was this political thing going on but still this Nez guy Rashid Nezhmedinov I think deserves really all of our respect he was one of the best tacticians in chess history and you saw how he smashed here the magician from Riga this was really I think one of the best chess games in history in the continuation I think I will show you also some more games in which Tal also won games against Nezhmedinov but their games were really really attractive and uh, that's why uh, we love them and uh, that's why we follow their games Meanwhile, you can watch my uh, other uh, commented chess games, uh, the best chess games that have been ever played in chess history. Here's the link, and you can also watch my best chess games played by computers with some Alpha Zero, Lila Zero, Stockfish games, and many, many more. And you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content. Thanks you for watching, guys, and chess is the best, of course.